do we really need a bill of materials even if uh, it is a single prototype or small volume electronics? Well, I used to ignore putting a lot of the information that's commonly found in a bill of materials, especially since I'm making just one or less than five units. For example, things like manufacturer part number, link to vendor, or even the cost if it comes from an internal stock parts. But then I realized that I kept going back to that bill of materials, whatever little bill of materials I had, uh, basically for three reasons. Number one, I needed similar parts in another project. Number two, I wanted to scale up a little bit, maybe make 10 units. And number three, I wanted to use the same parts for the next version of improvement of that prototype. So in today's video, we are going to discuss on what stuff to include or even consider in bill of materials, even if even if we are making one single prototype or low volume electronics. So I recently heard something called bomb consolidation, which is typically used for slightly higher volume electronics. But I think it's uh, worth it to glance at our schematics to see if we can optimize slightly even at this early stage. So I recommend watching this video, which is called a uh, tutorial PCB bomb consolidation by EEV blog. So let's look at KiCad, which uh, I use to design my schematic. And right at the top here, there's something called edit symbol fields. And once we click uh, you will see that all my parts list are populated here, but I've also added on a lot of the fields. And I added on the fields by clicking this add field button at the bottom to include stuff like say link, which is the vendor link. I've also added on minimum order quantity that we can buy from the vendor, the manufacturer part number, the manufacturer, which we can get from the part number as well, as well as package. I've also gone on to include something about the pricing, which is the unit cost as well as the name of the vendor. Now stock is something I have included which basically means where is the internal stock reference for finding this part because you know for prototypes we can easily use it from our internal stock. So at this stage bomb consolidation might simply mean taking a glance at this kind of table. So for example if you look at capacitors you see that I have three different values of capacitors and in total there are about 10 of them. Now maybe at this stage it is fine to use uh, three different values but I'm sure if I can look deeper I might be able to consolidate some of them and make it into two values. The next simpler thing to look at is uh, the LEDs. Here it seems I have three different colors of LEDs and about four parts in total. Maybe I can reduce it to two colors. Maybe, I don't know. And the next common part to look at are the resistors. And these are once again, pull up or pull down resistors. I have three values once again. So in terms of value and part consolidation, I'm still okay with it. It's not too complicated. Now I did try to do a little bit of the package and footprint consolidation. As you can see, I have tried to use 0805s and SMDs as far as possible. Now the final thing is the pricing I have written down the unit pricing here and I also have another column for minimum order quantity. At this point I'm not too concerned about uh, doing some cost optimization but this is something to definitely keep in mind if we want to make more than 10 units. So as you can see even in a prototype stage it is not too important to do massive bomb consolidation but good to take that in note. Uh, but I want to go through another example from Adafruit schematic that actually shows some bomb consolidation. So this is an example of an Adafruit uh, GPS module and here if we zoom in in terms of the resistors we will see that on the LEDs they have used 10k and also the I2C pull-ups they have used uh, 10k as well as well as there's another 10k on the GPS module itself. But if we come to the LED circuit here you will see that this uh, parallel resistor circuit is equivalent to 5k resistor but instead of using just one 5k, the team has decided to use two 10ks. This is definitely because of a bomb consolidation so that they can just use one type of resistor across the entire module, which is 10k. And I'm very sure that Adafruit manufactures in the order of hundreds or even thousands. So at this level of manufacturing and assembly, doing some kind of bomb consolidation becomes very, very important. So after doing some preliminary bomb consolidation, the next step is to decide 
inside the columns in the bill of materials. Now I used to ignore the manufacturer part number, but I realized how important it is even in the prototype stage. Now we probably should also include some cost information for future reference. So let's look at this capacitor that I'm using, which is 10 microfarad. Now, because I have the exact manufacturer part number, in this case is uh, LMK212 and so and so forth, I can search across various online e-commerce websites. For RS component, you can also search by part number as well as LCSC. And even if some part numbers are not found in a particular e-commerce website, for example, for this uh, 10K resistor, we can at least, at least do an online search to find its data sheet or uh, electrical characteristics and then find a similar part in the websites. So for low volume electronics, when we assemble or solder the parts, these parts might come from our internal stock. So what I used to do, I completely ignored the price of these parts, but I realized it is actually not a good practice for two reasons. Number one, if I want to publish the project for my friends or even online for others to refer, the total bomb cost is not the correct one because other people might not have the same part in their internal stock. And number two, it is not good for repeatability or even research for future similar projects or even higher volumes of that same project. So hence, I add on four more columns. Firstly is the vendor column, then the vendor link, which has the link to the exact part. I also add the unit price as well as the minimum order quantity. And with these four columns, I have a better picture for bill of materials cost. Now I did think of including another column called lead times, but I am really not sure whether this will be relevant for higher volumes of electronics, where the unit price will be cheaper and there might be other arrangements of delivery as well as the current pandemic situation. Maybe the lead times will be completely different, but this could be another column. As you see, I use KiCad's inbuilt symbol editor to add all the informations in a bill of material, but this means that I might have some missing parts that are not part of the KiCad's electrical schematics. And these parts can be things like battery, mechanical stuff such as screws, spacers, nuts, antennas, cables, external to the PCB or even the PCB itself that should be included as extra rows in the bill of material. So after exporting the bill of materials as CSV in KiCad through the BOMB plugins, I manually edit the comma separated file to include parts that are not included in the schematics. So the BOMB cost and the total number of parts definitely increase. But once again, this is a better reflection of what I'm building in totality. And well, as you can see, I think I should do some cost optimization for my next version because this is getting a little too expensive. But thankfully, once again, I have this bill of materials for repeatability and reference in the future. And the final thing to consider for bill of materials is the tools to make it. And I would just focus on a couple of them and they can be the open data format, which is CSV and a programming language such as Python to manipulate the data. And I love CSV because it enables data exchange between two applications if you are able to export from another and import into another application. So for my internal stock, I use parts box to list all of them. As you can see, the first column is the manufacturer part number, then some description, the footprint, also the amount of stock I have where it is located and even the past projects that I use this part. So I will be using parts box and KiCad to do a little bit of the data exchange in terms of bill of materials. And for that, I will be exporting a CSV file that will have the columns in this particular format. So I wrote a very, very simple Python script. This is where, like I said, a programming language to manipulate or even export the data is important. So as you can see, I wrote the code to have the very same kind of columns required. And then I will be outputting the various data, but especially in terms of the column designation, I will be writing the manufacturer part number so that I can match it with my internal stock. So let me go back to KiCad here. And this time I will 
click the generate bill of materials menu item and over here let me add a new plugin and it is not found in the default so I will select this plugin uh, that I already git cloned and I will select the main.py so let me open it and let me call it parts box import and OK and after this I will choose this custom bomb plugin and I will generate the file all right let me put a dot csv here so it will generate this file and let me generate it once again so here you will see I have the two files so of course I can delete the first one and I will import this file into parts box so I'll go inside parts box say to the projects and let me import and uh, I will click upload and yep I will choose oak.csv let me open it and yep it has parsed the file successfully especially the designation column which is the part number and I also chose the CAD program as SkyCAD of course there are other programs that we can choose and let me write the name of the project and click import. So after I click import, let's go to the bomb for the project. Many of the parts have been matched uh, for those with the exact part number, but there are many that I do not have in the internal stock. And these are yellow shaded and these are what I need to buy from the e-commerce websites for this particular project. So this was a very quick and easy way of knowing which parts are available and exactly where they are located. And for those that are not, I need to go and buy. I used to really not care about making a proper bill of materials for my single prototypes or low volume electronics. I mean, who cares? Uh, that's what I used to think and leave out information such as cost, pricing, where I got it from, manufacturer, part number. So hopefully in this video, you found something useful. Now I have one more resource to add on. It is a video by Scott Miller from Dragon Innovation where he links bill of materials to the pricing, costing, and the entire production line, even to high volume electronics. Let's have a look at it. But some of the commonalities are that they're starting with one and working their way up to millions. The one thing that's common across all of these steps is a bill of material which is really the foundation. So I would love to hear from you in the comments below. What would you consider or even include in a bill of materials, even for a prototype or low volume electronics? So thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one.